The Christmas story is one of waiting, hoping, and preparing. Like those eager moments we experience looking at the beautifully wrapped presents under the tree, just wondering and hoping what's inside. In the same way, for thousands of years, humanity waited and hoped for one who could come and save us from ourselves. There are literally hundreds of prophecies given so that when our Savior would come, we would know Him. We could recognize Him like we do in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulder, and His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In an amazing and miraculous twist, the Roman government had demanded that all people go to their hometown so they could be counted. Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem because that's where Joseph was from, even though Mary was very close to having her baby. And this was another miracle. The Savior was to be born in Bethlehem. God had made it possible for Jesus to be born in just the right place at just the right time. Luke 2.6 says, And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Shepherds were on the job near the manger where Jesus was born. It's important to know that shepherds were not considered highly valuable people in this day and age. In fact, most people looked down on them as doing dirty, embarrassing kinds of work. So it is absolutely astounding that God would choose to let them be the first ones to know the good news. It tells us something about the Christmas story. Hope, peace, joy, and forgiveness are for everyone. The Savior had come for everyone, and Jesus was a gift to the world. Luke 2.8 says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. Can you imagine the sky lit up with angel light and choirs of heavenly beings singing a song that had never been sung before? Although the Savior was born in humble circumstances, all of heaven wanted to make sure that each and every human being would know this child was not just a hero. He was not just going to grow up to be an important man. He was the very Son of God, and because of that, He could actually save us from our sins and rescue us from ourselves. Luke 2.10, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. And that's what the Christmas story is all about. Once a year, remembering a star that showed us where we needed to go. When we were lost, He showed us the way. When we were afraid of the dark, He became the great light. When we couldn't help ourselves, He saved us. We celebrate with gifts because Jesus was the greatest gift. We celebrate with trees because this baby would grow up and sacrifice Himself on a tree for us. And the greatest thing we can do this Christmas season is to give Jesus exactly what he's asking for, our very lives. Thank you so much for stopping by the Adai Family Christmas Display. If we can help or encourage you at all, please go to thechristmasmessage.com. Merry Christmas to you, and God bless. Merry Christmas from the Adai. Long, long ago, there was no need for Christmas. God made everything just as it was supposed to be, and the world was perfect. But humanity rebelled against God, and the whole world was turned upside down. What God made, we broke, and the consequences were harsh. We knew it was wrong, and we knew what we had done. So we tried to fix it, trying everything from power to philosophy to ignoring the problem to even pretending that we were God ourselves and we could be our own answer. But nothing worked. Then God stepped back in, sending His Son on that first Christmas. He came and lived perfectly, loved us passionately, and died powerfully, giving us the best Christmas message ever, directions back to Him. It's the same for all of us individually as well. We feel it deep inside. Within we know that God has a plan for all of us and that it's a great plan, that life is intended to be full of joy and that just waking up should be a celebration every day. But 
none of us actually live that life. We know that something is missing, incomplete, broken. Sure, we have good days, but when we're honest, we know that we're living lives that are not what they could be or should be. So we try and we try hard. Maybe if I'm a really good person, maybe if I really succeed, maybe if I do whatever makes me happy. And after a lifetime of running hard in that direction, we finally see it. We can't fix it ourselves. Then we remember Christmas. Jesus came, and it wasn't for the purpose of trees, songs, presents, and parties. He came to tell us that God wanted us back, and that through Jesus' sacrifice, we were given a way back to God, His plan and true life. So, this Christmas, we pray that you would accept the very first gift that was ever given, Jesus Christ Himself. If you've never taken that step before in your life, the beginning is pretty simple. It's just a prayer reaching out to Him. A prayer like this, Dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I need your help. Thank you for Jesus. I believe that he lived, he died, and he rose again, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Please help me to start over, starting right now, and thank you for this wonderful gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions or we can help you in your faith walk, simply go to thechristmasmessage.com and reach out. And from our house to yours, we simply want to say, Merry Christmas. Chapter 2 In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went out from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace be among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told to them.
Merry Christmas from the Adai. Long, long ago, there was no need for Christmas. God made everything just as it was supposed to be, and the world was perfect. But humanity rebelled against God, and the whole world was turned upside down. What God made, we broke, and the consequences were harsh. We knew it was wrong, and we knew what we had done. So we tried to fix it, trying everything from power to philosophy, to ignoring the problem, to even pretending that we were God ourselves and we could be our own answer. But nothing worked. Then God stepped back in, sending His Son on that first Christmas. He came and lived perfectly, loved us passionately, and died powerfully, giving us the best Christmas message ever, directions back to Him. It's the same for all of us individually as well. We feel it deep inside. Within we know that God has a plan for all of us and that it's a great plan, that life is intended to be full of joy and that just waking up should be a celebration every day. But none of us actually live that life. We know that something is missing, incomplete, broken. Sure, we have good days, but when we're honest, we know that we're living lives that are not what they could be or should be. So we try and we try hard. Maybe if I'm a really good person, maybe if I really succeed, maybe if I do whatever makes me happy. And after a lifetime of running hard in that direction, we finally see it. We can't fix it ourselves. Then we remember Christmas. Jesus came, and it wasn't for the purpose of trees, songs, presents, and parties. He came to tell us that God wanted us back and that through Jesus' sacrifice, we were given a way back to God his plan and true life. So this Christmas, we pray that you would accept the very first gift that was ever given, Jesus Christ himself. If you've never taken that step before in your life, the beginning is pretty simple. It's just a prayer reaching out to him. A prayer like this, dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I need your help. Thank you for Jesus. I believe that he lived, he died and he rose again and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Please help me to start over starting right now. And thank you for this wonderful gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions or we can help you in your faith walk, simply go to thechristmasmessage.com and reach out. And from our house to yours, we simply want to say, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. We know it as a Christmas carol, but originally it was not a song, just a poem written by William Wadsworth Longfellow. He was a gifted literary artist, a man of simple faith, and a patriot. And in 1860, life was good for him, his family, and his career and thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Tragedy struck the Longfellow household in 1861 when his wife Fanny's dress caught fire in a freak household accident. Longfellow raced to her and put out the flames, but was severely burned himself in the process, and she died the next day. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime, of peace on earth, goodwill to men. In 1863, Longfellow's son ran away from home to join the fight during the Civil War. He was severely wounded, and Longfellow had him return home where he would try and help put the pieces of his life back together. Then from each black, accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Longfellow's journal entries from Christmas Day tell the story. In 1861, he wrote, How inexpressibly sad are the holidays. In 1862, he wrote, A merry Christmas, say the children, but that is no more for me. 
It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent, and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in his journal from 1863, the year that his injured son was brought back home, there's no entry at all on that Christmas day. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. There is no doubt that Longfellow suffered an extended period of doubt, hurt, fear, anger, and confusion. It produced that last line of poetry which undeniably could be written about our experience today. Geopolitical tensions, medical pandemics, financial nightmares. But in the midst of all his pain, Longfellow remembered his faith. And it was in his journal from Christmas Day, 1864, that we have these words we know as, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Don't forget the last verse. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. 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 The bells of Christmas have been ringing for thousands of years. Sometimes they're hard to hear amidst the clatter and the chaos of this life, but they are there. You just have to listen. They're ringing of peace on earth, goodwill to men. The bells are ringing. Can you hear them? Merry Christmas from the Adai. Long, long ago, there was no need for Christmas. God made everything just as it was supposed to be, and the world was perfect. But humanity rebelled against God, and the whole world was turned upside down. What God made, we broke, and the consequences were harsh. We knew it was wrong, and we knew what we had done. So we tried to fix it, trying everything from power to philosophy to ignoring the problem to even pretending that we were God ourselves and we could be our own answer. But nothing worked. Then God stepped back in, sending His Son on that first Christmas. He came and lived perfectly, loved us passionately, and died powerfully, giving us the best Christmas message ever, directions back to Him. It's the same for all of us individually as well. We feel it deep inside. Within we know that God has a plan for all of us and that it's a great plan, that life is intended to be full of joy and that just waking up should be a celebration every day. But none of us actually live that life. We know that something is missing, incomplete, broken. Sure, we have good days, but when we're honest, we know that we're living lives that are not what they could be or should be. So we try and we try hard. Maybe if I'm a really good person, maybe if I really succeed, maybe if I do whatever makes me happy. And after a lifetime of running hard in that direction, we finally see it. We can't fix it ourselves. Then we remember Christmas. Jesus came, and it wasn't for the purpose of trees, songs, presents, and parties. He came to tell us that God wanted us back and that through Jesus' sacrifice, we were given a way back to God his plan and true life. So this Christmas, we pray that you would accept the very first gift that was ever given, Jesus Christ himself. If you've never taken that step before in your life, the beginning is pretty simple. It's just a prayer reaching out to him. A prayer like this, dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I need your help. Thank you for Jesus. I believe that he lived, he died and he rose again and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Please help me to start over starting right now. And thank you for this wonderful gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions or we can help you in your faith walk, simply go to thechristmasmessage.com and reach out. And from our house to yours, we simply want to say, 
Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and the service begun. The church was all decked out for holiday fun. Church members were nestled all snug in their pew, with wreaths and lights and poinsettias in view. The auditorium was warm to instill Christmas cheer, and singers were ready with carols near and dear. Then up at the front, with sermon notes handy, a Christmas message for sure from old Pastor Andy. The music was great. The message? Okay. But everyone's thoughts were for the breaking of day. For morning would come with presents and joy, mom getting clothes and dad, of course, toys. When out on the parking lot there arose such a clatter, we sprang from our seats to see what's the matter. Running out through the foyer and down the long hall, we stood in the doorway to watch one and all. A few feet away was a broken down car, dented and scratched and eyesore for sure. Then out stepped a man from this beat up old caddy, and three youngsters inside they each called him daddy. The little old driver was lively and quick, worked fast on the engine and gave it a kick. You might think he cursed if you didn't listen close, but sitting on the bumper, a real prayer he spoke. For Tasha and Shelly, for Lisa and I, God, we don't ask for much just to get by. We've nowhere to go and no presents to share, but we need this old car to get us out of cold air. Their mother has left us and I've made some mistakes, but I love them so much it makes my heart ache. I can't give them a thing except a night on the road. There's no Christmas for them, just darkness and cold. So please hear me, God. I feel so alone. I don't have a future. I don't have a home. I just need for you to make my car start and maybe some help for the pain in my heart. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, rubbed dirt off his hands, shut the hood with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, he wiped off a tear and down the street he drove. Quiet and shocked, we retreated inside to our tinsel and greens and soft candlelight. And the words of a carol seemed to ring out just then, saying peace on earth and joy to all men. We looked at each other with confusion of heart, our Christmas experience now saddened in part by a man and his girls on a cold Christmas night, with miles before them and no end in sight. Christmas should be about praise and thanksgiving, not how in the world can I make a living. But those near our churches will miss Christmas this year unless we tell them the reason for cheer. But past the front door and beyond these four walls, the message must go with a very loud call. For those lost in sin, your Savior is near. We must show the world King Jesus is here. With words of love, acceptance, and grace, and a helping hand to finish the race. Loving the world with our words and our deeds, we prove Christmas love by meeting their needs. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. 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 Merry Christmas from the Adai. Long, long ago, there was no need for Christmas. God made everything just as it was supposed to be, and the world was perfect. But humanity rebelled against God, and the whole world was turned upside down. What God made, we broke, and the consequences were harsh. We knew it was wrong, and we knew what we had done. So we tried to fix it, trying everything from power to philosophy to ignoring the problem to even pretending that we were God ourselves and we could be our own answer. But nothing worked. Then God stepped back in, sending His Son on that first Christmas. He came and lived perfectly, loved us passionately, and died powerfully, giving us the best Christmas message ever, directions back to Him. It's the same for all of us individually as well. We feel it deep inside. Within we know that God has a plan for all of us and that it's a great plan, that life is intended to be full of joy and that just waking up should be a celebration every day. But 
none of us actually live that life. We know that something is missing, incomplete, broken. Sure, we have good days, but when we're honest, we know that we're living lives that are not what they could be or should be. So we try and we try hard. Maybe if I'm a really good person, maybe if I really succeed, maybe if I do whatever makes me happy. And after a lifetime of running hard in that direction, we finally see it. We can't fix it ourselves. Then we remember Christmas. Jesus came, and it wasn't for the purpose of trees, songs, presents, and parties. He came to tell us that God wanted us back, and that through Jesus' sacrifice, we were given a way back to God, His plan and true life. So, this Christmas, we pray that you would accept the very first gift that was ever given, Jesus Christ Himself. If you've never taken that step before in your life, the beginning is pretty simple. It's just a prayer reaching out to Him. A prayer like this, Dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I need your help. Thank you for Jesus. I believe that He lived, He died, and He rose again, and I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. Please help me to start over, starting right now. And thank you for this wonderful gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions or we can help you in your faith walk, simply go to thechristmasmessage.com and reach out. And from our house to yours, we simply want to say, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.